Nearly 20 years ago, Toyota came out with its highly successful Prius, the world's first mass-produced hybrid vehicle. Now, along with Honda and Hyundai, Toyota is backing a different fuel technology, the hydrogen fuel cell. But with nearly every other car maker chasing Tesla on battery electric vehicles, why is Toyota pursuing hydrogen? At Toyota, we have what's called Environmental Challenge 2050, which means a 90% reduction in carbon emissions from our vehicle fleet by 2050. And the only way to get there is electrification. And to get to that electrification requires a portfolio approach of battery electric, plug-in hybrid electric, hybrid electric, and fuel cell electric. Fuel cell cars are basically electric vehicles powered by hydrogen and oxygen. The gases combine inside the cell to create electricity and water. EVs like the Tesla or Chevy Bolt can be recharged almost anywhere there's electricity, in your driveway or a public charging station, though a full charge can take hours. Refilling a hydrogen vehicle only takes a matter of minutes. But as of January, you can only fill your tank in one of 45 hydrogen stations in the U.S., most of them surrounding San Francisco and Los Angeles. Hydrogen is actually already mass produced in the U.S. It's a domestic fuel already, but it's used industrial and different processes. So we already have hydrogen pipelines, hydrogen trucks, hydrogen plants. We just need the dispensers that physically get the fuel into the vehicle. And we need to place those at locations where Mirai owners want to drive. Early customers of hydrogen vehicles have hit some bumps. In June of 2019, a hydrogen processing plant explosion in Santa Clara nearly choked off the hydrogen supply. Drivers faced long lines at the pump, and many were stranded without fuel or forced to rent a car. After six months of shortages, some drivers returned their leased vehicles early out of frustration. It was a really unfortunate experience, and we hope it doesn't deter our Mirai customers from purchasing the next generation. That said, what we did was we tried to alleviate the pain. We did offer some um, payment forgiveness. We also offered rental vehicles to help our customers still have transportation while there was a, a, you know, a supply shortage. We did our best to work with our supplier to use the lim limited supply that we did have to serve kind of the busiest areas. Um, you know, knowing that it wasn't ideal because we were still leaving a lot of customers unserved. So we were balancing the market on a small amount of hydrogen, right? But going forward, you, we're seeing a dedicated supply for transportation. I will say right now, our, our customers in California are already hitting the limits of the hydrogen infrastructure in California. We do need more dispensers and we need larger stations with higher throughput. The Post spoke with many drivers of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. While not all were completely unhappy, each of them had experienced some degree of inconvenience. There's been many times that I've tried to fill up in San Jose. The latches are broken or they need repair or again, there's a fuel shortage, there isn't anything available. You know, what am I supposed to do? Because I'm stuck, there's, there isn't anywhere for me to go and they don't know what they can do other than send a tow truck out. But sending a tow truck out would mean there's nobody to pick up my kids from school. Honda was good, you, they give you a three week rental and after that you had to call them, get pre-authorization. So I had a rental for a total of nine weeks but that was getting inconvenient as well. So I just kept uh, driving less uh, and going to either San Ramon or Oakland, uh, sometimes to Mountain View uh, for fuel. This is something that has been happening really since the first six months of owning the vehicle. Once that was through and more vehicles were out um, being driven from the various manufacturers, but no new infrastructure went in place, then it continues to be less and less and less available. So why are automakers spending so much to make hydrogen happen? One explanation might be that California law requires automakers to reduce the average carbon footprint of all cars they sell in the state. Hydrogen fuel cell cars are one way they're trying to meet that standard. But Toyota and Honda insist they're fully committed and say they see hydrogen as a way to electrify their future fleets. Honda says hydrogen fuel cells are one part of its strategy to cut the company's global carbon emissions by 50% from 2000 levels by 2050. Toyota says it will launch a sportier new 2021 Mirai and is even significantly increasing production. We've increased our facilities in Japan to make about 30,000 vehicles a year. That said, we are driven by where those vehicles go based on hydrogen dispenser availability. Again, we do not want to have a situation in which people are buying the vehicle and there's not enough fuel or there's not enough dispensers. Since 2010, the California Energy Commission says it's invested nearly $120 million to build 64 hydrogen refueling stations, with the goal of opening 100 stations by 2024. Hydrogen retailer True Zero says about 60% of its funding comes from tax dollars, with the rest coming from automakers and energy companies. Conventional fuels like the gasoline infrastructure 
Uh, these have evolved over 100 years to be very robust. We don't have kind of the redundancy that um, you know other supply chains have that have been around longer. Toyota's responsibility is to ensure that when the stations are placed, that they have a high reliability, that our customers have sufficient fuel, that they have a good fueling experience, which is difficult because that's not actually what Toyota does. We don't do infrastructure. But drivers like Aaron Fogarty say paying for a few months of their lease doesn't resolve the impact it's had on their family. Money for the vehicle is one thing, but money for the extra childcare expenses or the missed activities or the airline tickets and all of that other stuff, that's not covered. We've missed dance classes and personal training classes and stuff that really costs a lot of money and truly impacts uh, our quality of life and how we choose to live our life. California is a very unique use case in that we have the highest number of fuel cell vehicles for the lowest amount of hydrogen dispensers. If you look at Japan and you look at Europe, they have more supply than they do demand. So we're really stretching the capabilities of the hydrogen infrastructure and the entire world is watching California.